My name is Tim Carter, I pastor at Landmark Missionary Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Arkansas. This is our apologetic and outreach ministry. Uh, that is, we use apologetics and give a rationale for what we believe, why we believe. We're very difficult work. We work through it very meticulous. But as a missionary Baptist, Landmark Missionary Baptist Church particularly, uh, Landmark, we refer to the original meanings of our words and missionary the, we were commissional before it was cool uh, we've been commissional since the great commissioner gave us the great commission 2000 years now and we were earned the name Baptist uh, by our enemies who accused us because if someone comes out from any other gospel any other uh, spirit any other Thing different that is any different thing than that of which the Bible speaks um, and profess faith in the right message then we can gladly <laughs> celebrate that through the right message they have been fathered and are always being fathered and then when they come out we baptize them confer upon them the profession of faith and our baptism is about the gospel that they believe, which is the gospel we preach. So people that believe the gospel we preach, we baptize those people because our baptism is about that gospel which we preach. And then our fellowship, our communions in the gospel, even our communion services, Lord's Supper, we memorialize the death of Jesus, the Jesus about whom our gospel speaks and of whom our profession of faith through baptism uh, to whom we hold fast in that profession. And then our great commission is to take that gospel. So everything's the gospel. Father through the gospel, our baptism is about the gospel, not a gospel, that our gospel is about baptism. That's a whole, that's a large error that other people prefer. And our fellowship's into the gospel. So when this final part on a, an article by Professor W.E. Nunali, it's because we follow the Good Shepherd that speaks of him, his credential, Jesus himself, our Lord and Savior, uh, the one of whom our gospel speaks. Uh, but this fourth part is to just make it clear that what's been missed, the omissive error of W.E. Nanali is that the entire chapter 10 is about Jesus himself, our Jesus, not his, his Jesus uh, is the hireling, he says. His gospel's different, and the spirit that leads him is different. He says that. I listen carefully and am convinced by what he teaches. He's absolutely confusing. He He's calling the hireling. He's identified the hireling because under the good shepherd, uh, he said we absolutely might not destroy. He said the sheep absolutely might not destroy themselves. Our English text our Bible says never perish and when we look up the word never it's absolutely not so the meaning of the word never for us here at Landmark Missionary Baptist Church we as landmarkers go to the original meaning and that meaning never changes so for W.E. Nunali never doesn't mean never he kind of sees it as a relative term so might destroy themselves would go over here. So I just make a sad face because that's the way we would feel. That's so this is destroy themselves. This would be true of the hireling. And since W. E. Nanali said he might perish because he says it doesn't rule out the possibility that he would exercise his free will and depart. He, he didn't define free will, and no one of a different gospel will define free will from the Bible. Uh, so he's saying by his free exercise of this free will, you know, that thing people use to prevent from gaining weight, and that's why in January you won't hear anything about weight loss or Slim Fast or Nutrisystem. <laughs> or like one man who pre preaches a different gospel actually said once that... Uh, if you're counting on your free will, you're not going to make it. And I thought that was ironic, but he wouldn't apply that to what the Bible says. But this undefined thing from Dr. 
New Nally. Um, he says he's going to save himself and prevent himself from being destroyed. But it says not even one wolf, meaning not even one. Jesus said no man is able to pluck, and he's talking about a sheep, out from his hand. And when you look up that word no, for no man, it's an emphatic. It's not even one. And in the context, of course, uh, Wolf fits very well as far as explaining it to make this picture really clear that Jesus in chapter 10 is distinct, is separating himself from the hireling. So we don't want to confuse the hireling, the good shepherd, with the hireling. And Jesus is making it really clear. I'm nothing like the hireling. They will destroy themselves. The wolf, the wolf, they insist that the wolf can take them from the hand of the hireling. Now, what prevents the wolf from taking them, I have no idea, and W. E. Nunali would never say it. He will never teach what prevents the wolf from taking him from the hireling's hand. Since he can depart, as he says, take or leave the hireling, we can't take or leave Jesus. Our testimony says that he has the words of life and we cannot leave him. Uh, W.E. Nunali says, I can take the hireling or leave him. And as any Christian will tell you, uh, that is anyone, for example, here at Landmark Missionary Baptist Church who has been born from above and has been favored to keep on believing grace, will tell you that if you can take or leave Jesus, you're not speaking of the Jesus of the Bible. So uh, people with that attitude, that flippant attitude, don't know what it is to have been born from above. They don't know what it is to have someone uh, like the Good Shepherd lay down his life for them. He laid down his life, which prevents even one wolf from taking us from his hand, which prevents any one of us. It's absolutely not possible that one of us would destroy ourselves. He would prevent that. So, thus far, W.E. Nunali says of his hireling that he is following he can destroy himself and it's possible he might a wolf can pluck him from his hand and there's really nothing he can do about it which except one thing he won't answer is what's preventing the wolf from doing it any wolf apparently and Jesus said those that believe on him even though they uh, die absolutely might not die and he said never die the word never there when you look that up it's absolutely not so he says, yes. I'm putting a sad face because that's the way I feel about it. You take one of us, God's sheep, from the care of the good shepherd and ask us to take this deal? <laughs> that's not even... Oh, my goodness. Uh, and then absolutely might not hunger, absolutely might not thirst. So we come to him, we might absolutely never hunger again and we'll never thirst. So over here, yes, they'll hunger he says, yes, they'll hunger, and yes, they'll thirst. And I guess the outcome of this is determined, I guess, on just random luck, because since W.E. Nunali and anyone that advocates a different gospel and is an ambassador for the hireling and that, other spirit, that different spirit that uh, leads them, it's impossible for them to say what prevents the wolf and then if they say, well, we prevent the wolf, we protect ourselves, well, then they admit they don't need the good shepherd. I can't protect myself from the wolf. The good shepherd does that. And his father, my father, who art in heaven, <laughs> is greater than any wolf and has given Jesus as the good shepherd of this particular flock, for example, here in Jacksonville, Arkansas. So, again, I don't know what to argue about. W.E. Nunali, Ph.D., professor of Judaism and Christian origins in a place called Evangel University has made his case that he can destroy himself and he might. A wolf can pluck him out of the hireling's hand and he might. I don't know why he wouldn't just go ahead and do it. He says he might die and he might. He says he might hunger again and he might. He might thirst again and he might. But I'm not arguing with W.E. Nunali. This is apologetics and outreach, not 
uh, Goober and Gomer sitting on the Coke box at Wally's gas station in the little town called Mayberry. What are you talking about? <laughs> why would why would ambassadors for Christ go into a situation and be like Paul walking into the um, area where all these idols were and he just began to preach to them who the unknown God was that they were careful not to but he wasn't about to confuse the God whom he spoke on whose behalf he spoke with the other things that were represented there he began to bring light and knowledge of the true and living God I'm here to preach and bring light and knowledge of the true gospel, the right message, the Good Shepherd. So I do not argue and would never even contend with someone like W.E. Nunelli. I would just say, uh, as long as you understand that I agree with you, W.E. Nunelli, that if you tell me you might destroy yourself, and you might, if you tell me that a wolf is capable of taking you, and pluck you from the hand of the hireling, and he might. <laughs> and you tell me that uh, you might die, and you might, and you might hunger again, and you might, then I I'm just recommend the issue is not something that you're arguing about, some kind of interpretation. It's you have clearly identified, and God's people aren't confused. We're not confused about the Good Shepherd. If you can read chapter 10 of the Gospel of John, this early, the Gospel that was written and remains on record, the attesting miracles written and remain on record, in order that you might cause yourself to believe that Jesus is the Christ, it says ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that we, as ones who are already believing, might have life in His name. We don't find any life in this column here. And if you're, you can't separate hireling from the good shepherd, you're following the hireling. So I agree. If we, so W. E. and Alley is an ambassador for the hireling. I'm an ambassador for the good shepherd. So know the difference. Uh, we do. If you don't, uh, perhaps maybe if you say, well, why is uh, your gospel, why is our gospel here at Landmark hid? Well, the Bible even tells us why. And W. E. Nunali can tell you, but uh, a child can understand the difference <laughs> between the good shepherd and the hireling. If you want to in, rule in all these possibilities that you might die, and you might, and you might hunger, and you might, and you might thirst, and you might, and a wolf might get you, and he might, that's no difference uh, and no distinction. So we're here as holy. We practice holiness. We practice separating um, the Good Shepherd and distinguishing them. So you have a blessed day, and and uh, especially for those of you out there that are sheep and you're hearing all this nonsense, remember the purpose of this gospel is so that we can trust and support that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, the Good Shepherd, and that we're always, as believers, we're always believing. There's no such thing as a believer not believing. So... Um, I regret for W. E. Nunnally and all the people he's misled, and I regret this different gospel, this different spirit, this other Jesus, because he's not much of a Jesus who can't even stop a wolf from taking a sheep, and we know he can't because it has to be possible that the wolf can take the sheep, or um, it breaks down their whole hireling resume. <laughs> There's nothing good in his resume. When it comes to the wolf, he can't stop it. When it comes to a sheep um, destroying itself, he can't prevent it. When it comes to hunger, he can't feed them. When it comes to thirst, he can't water them. When it comes to their death, he can't prevent it. He can't give them life. So um, you have a blessed day, and thank God that we know the difference between the good shepherd and the